I do love Sleeping Booty. Sleeping Booty. Hello. Are you like me? You are very interested and would love to pursue more historical sewing projects, but also the intimidation of doing so has reached debilitating heights. And so you just keep saying, yeah, I'd love to do that. And then you just never end up doing it. Welcome. This is a safe space. All right. So yeah, uh, pretty much I really love historical sewing, historical garments of pretty much any kind, <sighs> except for Regency era. I feel like I keep avoiding doing anything of that sort. Also, we're just going to pretend that these are happy, healthy majesty palms and not shriveling up like the chocolate lady from SpongeBob. Chocolate. I love doing <laughs> neighbors. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me, don't mind me, I'm just a girl talking to herself in her sunroom. Much like a sim practicing their charisma level. This week, we're gonna do the thing, or at least we're gonna try to do the thing. I got a good push to do something more historical this week. A few friends of mine in the CosTube community, we all decided to do historical Disney princesses. Now, I'm sure you've seen this done before. It's a very popularized reimagining of princesses and something that I really love. Um, no matter how many times people do it, I think that it's really fun and interesting to see what people come up with. You've heard of historical Disney princesses, but have you heard of sort of historical Disney princesses because that's probably what my video is, is gonna be. Um, we're gonna set the bar very low <laughs> for reference. Expectation level uh, high would be 80s movies renderings of the 2000s in terms of futurism. Somewhere in the middle here, um, Charles Dickens lies all the way over here is where this video will rest. We all uh, divided the characters up amongst ourselves and I chose Briar Rose specifically. I do love Sleeping Booty. Sleeping Booty. I do love Sleeping Beauty, but I feel like that's been done a lot. Honestly, when it comes to historical fashion, I am much more drawn to kind of the working class or in terms of medieval, I guess, kind of like peasant or farm wear. I'm much more drawn to pre-glow up side of Disney princesses. And so Briar Rose is right up my alley. Foresty, talks to animals. Pretty much all I've ever wanted in life is for woodland creatures to help me sing musical numbers in the forest. Now, my plan for this takes place around the 15th 15th century or the 14th century, I don't know. But I'm gonna go for 15th, I think. Why didn't I bring my phone in here? <sighs> that was silly of me. Okay, here we go. Do you also have to hype yourself up to get off the couch or is that? Just me, be your own hype man, that's what I say. All right, so let me, um pull up what I was thinking. So in terms of design, this is generally what I was thinking. Ooh. <clears throat> now, yes, this uh, intimidates the crap out of me. We're gonna give it a shot. I think the skirt is gonna be the easiest part, but in terms of the kind of curdle bodice, <sighs> pray for me. When I can, I would very much enjoy a cosplay or costume to double as something that I can actually wear. Don't want it to be too, too structured where I need historical undergarments to wear because honestly, I would wear it once and then that's it. I'm gonna try to make something that is structured enough that when I wear it, it feels nice and snug. And I definitely want this to be something that I can wear, which I just said, so. <sighs> I guess I can show you the fabrics that I got. Oh, I'm scared. But before I do that, I, I, there is something important that I need to show you. I'm not procrastinating, you're procrastinating. Why would you say that? I sense judgment. Well, that shook my entire house. There's something about thigh high socks. Nothing says I'm the main character like cutting the blood flow to your legs down by about 30%. Much like a lot of my projects, I got all of my fabric from Fabric Mart. They sell dead stock fabrics, so good stuff. Like a can of cranberry sauce. Let's do it. So for the skirt, holy.
wool slash nylon 55 inches wide. I got five yards of this for $17.50 per yard. Not cheap. An easier time justifying it when I can think of this as a garment that I'm gonna wear more than just a costume. So heavy, very nice. I think that this will live up to the amount of swoosh that the actual Briar Rose has. And then for the bodice, I got 100% black linen. Two yards of this for $24.99 per yard. Linen is hella expensive, but it's so very nice. For the actual like chemise, Chemis? How do you pronounce chemis? That's pronounced commis. I don't think that's right. Chemise. Chemise. <laughs> chemise. Chemise. I did not get any fabric for that because I felt like I probably wouldn't have time to make that alongside everything else that I need to make in four days. I have enough medieval inspired tops that I think I can get away with just sticking one of those underneath. So I think I'm gonna get started maybe on the bodice first just because I'm more worried about that. I don't have a specific pattern for this. There is a kirtle pattern from a costuming book, I believe, that I didn't have time to order because it was from the UK. But the amazing Abby and Marika have sent me pictures of the pattern. We're gonna try to do it that way. <laughs> Let's get started. 12 seconds later. So I decided to make my own pattern pieces for this and to do this I took an existing pattern that I had just for reference, traced a shape that would more closely match the pictures of the kirtle. And look I know I'm not supposed to use fabric scissors on anything other than fabric but So nice. Because linen is so freaking expensive, I did decide to do a mock up with some thrifted bed sheets. Okay. Here is the mock up of the bodice pattern. The fit is definitely snug. So it kind of like just about matches up, which normally I probably wouldn't want, but for this, I think that is actually perfect because a snug fit will really lend itself to looking more like a corseted top. That will leave it some room to put some lacing right here. Also, side note, some of you have already seen my new friend, but He's so cute. I put up a story showing him in the window. So many messages about how I should not put him near the window because the sun can go through here and burn your house down. But the spot I put him in has no direct sunlight. He shall not start the fire. And so henceforth, his name is Billy Joel. I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. Nick had to go into the office today. One thing I will say, you don't realize the borderline unhealthy attachment you develop to your partner when they've been working from home for the past year until they're gone. <laughs> and you're just sitting there like an animal off of an ASPCA commercial waiting for them to get home. The arms of the okay, so today we are going to get to work on the bodice. So instead of boning, I think what I'm going to do... Sparkle, sparkle. is just use interfacing. I think that will help make the bodice really stiff and spit a little there. Really sturdy. So let us give that a shot. sure if this is what you're actually supposed to do, but I basically just attached a layer to the interfacing. Attached all those pieces together and then I did a separate lining. 
All right, I have got the two layers here, the layer that is directly attached to the interfacing and then the outer layer ready to be sewn along the edges. I think once I add all the lacing, it'll really help make it not look so much like a bulletproof vest, but you know, we'll see. Okay. I've stitched all the edges and then I added waistband thing. I think what I need to do is make them separate. Kirtle, corset top, and then the skirt by itself. It is a little bit small. <laughs> Originally I was thinking like, okay, if the waist meets, then I can have the skirt attached to the bodice, but um, yeah, I may have made it a little too small. If they're separates, then I have twice the amount of opportunities to wear them. Getting to that point in a sewing project where if I'm wearing makeup, it starts to look really weird and sort of like I'm the doll from that one episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? That still has stuck with me 20 years after watching it. Let's make some holes, shall we? Or had an idea of where the holes wanted to go, we can take out our friend Gromit Log. And with the utmost grace, um, smash. Then used black embroidery floss and just made them look nice and pretty. Good morning. The bodice portion is complete. Uh, it's a little hard to see because I'm wearing a dark shirt. You know, it's a little bulky in some of the corners. Around the waist, I do like how structured that is. It's a nice tight hug. Similarly to if you were to buy your dog a thunder jacket. Hmm. I am gonna move on to the sleeves. I um, kind of forgot about. <laughs> Those I think will be pretty basic. I'm just going to use a sleeve pattern that I already have. Cut it off so that it starts here rather than up here. Actually, I am going to line these sleeves. I had kind of fun lining the bodice. Who am I? Let's do some sleeves. All right, so for the sleeves, I chose this slender lady right here. Folded over the top because I didn't need that part. This pattern piece called for darts, so I did that. Once the darts are sewn and pressed, you can fold it over like a taco, sew it, and then you're gonna do that three more times. <laughs> two for the inner layers and two for the outer. Then you're gonna choose one to turn right side in then slip the inside out in, into the inside, outside, in. Yeah, you get it. I know that I shouldn't smoke, shouldn't hope you're lonesome, but I do. You know I do. skirt I took the panel that I usually have to use like eight or ten uh, different pieces of fabric for and I decided to widen it a little so that I don't have to use as many. I also quickly whipped up a waistband. Good morning! Okay so today we are putting the skirt panels together. Five of these. Originally I was just going to do four panels, two in the front, two in the back, but then I had some extra leftover fabric so I decided why not just add an extra to make it a little bit more full and a little bit more swooshy. Also here is the waistband. Last night I did go in and hand stitch the top and the sides because I, I kind of like the look of it. I think it looks a little bit more loved and a little bit more medieval than uh, <laughs> machine sewing. Oh boy. Attach all five of these panels together, gather them to the waistband, and then swoosh test. Let's get to work. <laughs> To gather the skirt, I just did it by hand and sandwiched it in between the two layers of the waistband and pinned. 
And since I was hand sewing, I decided it might be fun to, you know, take this outside. Spend some time in nature, listen to the birds, you know, very whimsical. Me will spend unnecessary hundreds of dollars on fabric and clothing. <laughs> also me. me passionately rant about things looking better in cloches, but today's complete sidetrack tangent is called Unnecessarily Satisfying Disney Moments. So I asked you on Instagram what your favorite satisfying Disney moments are, and yes, it is a requirement that you need to whisper that word. But first, let me lead off with some of my favorites. In no particular order, number one is the hyenas eating zebra meat in Lion King. Listen, y'all, I have never been tempted to eat an actual zebra, but when I watch that scene, I'm kidding. But they do make that look so freaking delicious. Along the same lines, Timon and Pumbaa eating bugs. They looked so scrumptious. Positively scrummy. Does anyone else remember dessert from the 90s? I don't remember if it was like Italian ice or something. A bunch of gummy bugs and it, it was Lion King. Number three, very on point with this video, is pretty much the whole entire movie of Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> that lopsided cake that just kind of like schmears over. Mm. Oh. <laughs> of course we have Mulan taking her makeup off because Come on. Because I'll tell you right now, if taking lipstick off was that easy and you looked that good afterwards, I'd be wearing lipstick a whole lot more. But instead, I get this. <coughs> Number five is Ursula putting on lipstick. 29 years old and I don't fully understand what substance that is that she's spreading across her lips, but she looks great. This may be very, very specific to me, but for some reason in the Aristocats, when all of the kittens are in a basket and it starts raining, Let's see what you guys have to say. One of the more popular ones was the bug. Again, Disney making bugs look absolutely scrumptious. The bug in the diner scene from Emperor's New Groove. The mice picking up and eating the little corn kettles in Cinderella. The way Snow White trims the pie crust. The animation of Cinderella's dress. And you know, there's pixie dust everywhere. Oh, satisfying. The scene where they restore Woody. Anything where just like paint is, is gently and delicately and sensually brushed across the surface. Forget it. Creme a la creme a la Edgar. The bread bite in Aladdin. The bread bite? When Tiana pours the powdered sugar over the beignets. This isn't an animated Disney movie, but the ice cream in Hook. For a while, I don't know if they still have it, but for a while there was rainbow ice cream in like any ice cream shop that you went to and I would get it absolutely every time, even though it was just vanilla, solely because of Hook. Too short for this chalkboard. If you could see my actual position right now, you would be shocked. Honestly, I wish I could read all of these because they all filled me with very warm and hungry feelings inside, but we've got a reveal to do. Let's do it. up time. Ta -da! Sort of historic Briar Rose 
is complete. Oh, my head is so itchy. What went well, what didn't go so well. Overall, I am very happy with it. Number one, I think detachable sleeves should be something that returns to modern society. Convenient. Your arms are getting a little sweaty. Freaking take them off. I think I kind of look medieval. I think the detachable sleeves definitely help, but I also look just a smidgen um, pilgrimy. I think it might be the colors, I don't know. I do think that this kind of bodice with the corset lacing is pretty common throughout a few different centuries, so I think maybe that's why. And then I didn't really do much for my hair, so I, I didn't feel like doing that. I found 14th century hair to be very hard to research. And by research, I of course mean a very, very quick Google search. Okay, listen, we're we're on a tight schedule here. If someone was working the farm or walking in a forest and lives in the middle of nowhere in a cottage, would she bother doing her hair like the rest of society? No, because she would have no idea what that even means. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, she might be a little crazy. Take that, Prince Philip. I think the silhouette is probably my favorite part. Skirt kinda goes out because this is cinched in so much because the fabric is so thick. Um, you know, it's given me fake hips. Kirtle came out pretty cute. Kinda weird with the interfacing like at the, the corners. I'm very happy that I have now a skirt. I, I, <sighs> sorry, I'm hungry and there's a chicken sub waiting for me upstairs. So my brain is a little, frazzled and itchy. I'm so glad that I got a skirt and a whole top out of this instead of just making a costume that, you know, would go straight in my costume closet, never to be touched again. That is it. If you would like a little bit more accuracy in the historical department, I highly recommend you go check out all of the other amazing humans that I did this collaboration with. I will have all of their channels and if they have a video up, in the description, there's also a huge playlist of other Coztubers and YouTubers that have done this exact kind of idea. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload almost every Friday <laughs> and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. You make my dreams come true. Ooh. Wrote great expectations. Charles Dickens wrote great expectations. Thank you, House Robot. I thought I put it here, but I guess I was sadly mistaken. I also. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Turtlenecks, man. Ventilate. Ah. <laughs> Tree frogs. Oh, uh, uh. <sighs> mm.